Hi, it's Carol from ReadingGroupGuides.com, and I want to share a little bit more about the books that we're featuring on the site this October. First up, this is a book I absolutely loved last year. It's a called Library Book by Susan Orlean, and I know it was a favorite with a lot of our readers as well. It's now out of paperback, and it's our What's Your Book Group Reading prize book this month, which means if you write and tell us what your book group is reading, what you're reading with your club this month, you could be entered to win one of three sets of 12 copies of the library book for your group for a future discussion. So let me tell you a little bit about what the library book is about. And it was bets on last year and why I loved it so much. Um, starts out with a fire that happened at the Los Angeles Library on April 29th, 1986. 400,000 books were burned, completely destroyed, and 700,000 others were damaged. So what she's going to look at in this book is what happened at the library, where 30 years later there's still a question of who set the fire, or was it set, or what happened that day, but also she's going to take a very long look at what libraries mean in this country right now and the depth of what is offered there. My own personal uh, favorite anecdote from the book was where she was in the map room and she was describing the storage of the maps there and the cataloging of the maps. We always think of libraries as places where you can go take out books and other materials, but also she talks a lot about the programs that are in the libraries and also how libraries are stewards and custodians of community as well. Really, really interesting. I urge you to enter to win with your group. Next up, we've got If Only I Could Tell You by Hannah Beckerman. We're giving away 25 copies of this book in a contest that's open until October 23rd. Um, in this book, we've got a mother who has two daughters, and because of a secret, something that was kind of untold over the years, there's friction between them. And as a result, even their teenage daughters have never met. So her granddaughters and her daughters are estranged. And what she's trying to figure out is what she can do now to rectify the situation. I've been getting a lot of buzz about this book. It was a book of the month club selection. It's something that you want to take a look at. And nice to have a discussion with your group. It's trade paperback. Lee Bardogo is very well known in the YA community. And she's a big bestseller. And this is her first book for adults. Um, in Ninth House, we've got some black magic. We've got something, a whole, let me just actually read because it's, I just find that the prose here to describe what this is just works so well. It's a mesmerizing adult debut from Lee Bardugo, a tale of power, privilege, dark magic, and murder set among the Ivy League elite. And in case you're wondering which campus this is, this Ivy League campus, well, right here we've got a map of the campus of Yale. Next up, I want to talk to you about A Well-Behaved Woman by Therese Ann Fowler. I listened to this on audio last year. It's just out in paperback, and it's a penny's pick at Costco this month. Which is, and it also just hit the New York Times bestseller which, list, which is extremely exciting. Here's what's happened in the book. At the beginning, Alva is really living on Skid Row with her family, and they don't have any money, but she knows that if she marries well, she can save her whole family. And this is happening a lot with the women of her decade, of you know, what they were able to do. She's beautiful, she goes to a party, and she definitely endears herself to one of the Vanderbilt boys. She ends up getting married, and what she does from there is try to help position them. It's at a time where everything was about where you lived and what parties you were gonna be invited to and what lists you were gonna be on. And she made sure that the Vanderbilts were very much socially more acceptable by what she was doing. She built a beautiful home that I wish still existed in the 50s so I could go see it. She's also built a home for them up in Newport. And, but more than that, later on, she also took on social causes and she was one of the leaders of the suffragette movement. And it's something that you know, we really don't think about her in terms of we just think about wealth and money when we hear the Vanderbilt name. So worth checking out and having a great discussion with your book group. Next up, we've got Right After the Weather by Carol Ann Shaw. It's absolutely crazy about her last book, Carrie the One, and I'm kind of kicking myself I haven't read this one already. In it, there's a woman named Kate. She's living in an arts community in Chicago, and she's there, and it's with, she's living with her ex-husband and a couple of other people, and she walks into the kitchen, and their neighbors from down the block who are sociopaths, they're drug addicts, and they've got a lot of issues going on, start assaulting her in a kitchen. And what she actually has to think about now is, what happens to her, how she feels about this situation, it sort of upends her life and everything she knows is pulled out from under her. 
So something to have a really interesting discussion about when life sort of spins out of control and it's not something that you really saw coming. Next up, we have The Sisters of Summit Avenue by Lynn Cullen. Many of you can remember her as the author of Mrs. Poe and Twain's End. So in this new book, it's set during the Depression, and we've got two sisters who are dealing with what's happening with the unraveling of their lives and how they're trying to keep things together with their families. Um, the depression is something that we've been looking at in books. And, you know, while it's been um, a, a period that we've talked about before, between this tender land and now the Sisters of Summit Avenue, we've got two books right now that are speaking about the depression and giving another glimpse and look into that era and what it was and how difficult it was for so many people. Next, we've got A Single Thread by Tracia Chevalier, which we reviewed a couple of weeks ago on Book Reporter. Um, in this book, it's the right after the war, after the First World War, there's a group of women that have come together and they're, build, they're in, doing embroidery in churches and the cushions and the, 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 the pews and their work is beautiful and detailed and they formed a community among themselves. Because remember, after World War I, there were fewer men and as a result, a lot of the women were banding together and because they knew they were not gonna be married and they knew that they weren't going to be have, have families so they formed their own kind of a community. What we have here is right before the Second World War, our character has a moment where she has to figure out what is going to work out for her at this particular junction and what she's willing to risk. Next, from Jojo Moyes, we've got The Giver of Stars. This book is set in Kentucky, and we have a horsewoman who is delivering books and bringing books to people out in the community. Um, Jojo Moyes, you will probably remember both, most for her book, Me Before You. Um, this is something completely different with her writing historical fiction. Next, we have The Dutch House by Ann Patchett, which is the Read with Jenna Today Show book club selection this month. Um, it's been nice to see like what's happening with those books. They're getting, you know, getting some traction and hear readers, you know, coming together. You know, I'm trying to figure out what Jenna's style is at this point and try to guess what she's going to pick. I'm always trying to figure out, you know, what's going to be picked by people. So um, just something to be thinking about. Um, here we've got the Dutch house is a home that is bought right after uh, World War II uh, by a man who comes back from the war. He wants to have a beautiful home for his family to live in. He sees this as a fam home that he wants to have as a mansion in Philadelphia in his home family for generations. He wants people to be able to enjoy it. And now flash forward, the story is told over five decades and all of a sudden the children are not allowed in the home and the stepmother has taken it over. What's happened to this family? How have they fallen apart over the years? and what really happened in the Dutch house. I think you all know that we've been doing our uh, Book Reporter Talks to interviews, which I've really been enjoying, and I hope you've been enjoying as well. If you like them, you can uh, watch them on YouTube, and if you want to comment, it will really help us you know, with our algorithms and all those kinds of things on the back end that get you better known. We have two that I want to alert you to for right now. Um, first up, we've got Becoming Mrs. Lewis by Patty Callahan. This book was one of my bets on selections a year ago. Um, Patty's actually started a podcast that gives you a story of behind the making of Becoming Mrs. Lewis, and she interviews people that she interviewed along the way when she was writing the book. I've got both a video and a podcast with Patty where we're talking about this book. So if you um, take a look at the notes on our YouTube channel here, we'll have links to that so you'll be able to find it quickly. So something to be able to explore. We had a really fun conversation. Also, a few months ago, I interviewed Fiona Davis, and it was absolutely fun. The video is up on YouTube, and we've just added it to our podcast series as well. Our Book Reporter Talks to podcasts are available on podcast.bookreporter.com if you just want to listen, either that or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. If you're wondering what the Book Reporter Talks to podcasts are, let me tell you real quick what they are the audio interviews from the videos because we realize that not everyone likes to watch video and not everyone likes to listen to audio so we're trying to give you an opportunity to hear these author interviews whatever format you're interested in if you comment on them i'd absolutely love it because we love to hear that kind of a feedback and it also you know helps promote the algorithms and get more people to getting a chance to take a look at these you can find them on apple podcasts or wherever your favorite podcast player is all you have to do is search Book Reporter Talks To, and you'll be able to find all the interviews that we've done. 
And speaking of interviews, usually I like to keep a surprise of what we're working on, but I'm doing an interview with Heather Morris, who wrote The Tattooist of Auschwitz, a huge book, huge bestseller, and Silka's Journey, which just came out and hit the New York Times list. I actually listened to this over the last week. I'm going to be interviewing her on October 29th, and if you have questions that you'd like me to ask Heather, I, this is your opportunity. We're going to do something different this time. If you'd like to share questions, I'll be selecting some to be included in my interview. I need those by October 20th. Send them to carol at bookreporter.com with the subject line, question for Heather Morris. So as you can see, we have a lot going on this month. Um, I think we're going to try and do these videos monthly to keep you in the loop on what's happening. And it's something that you may want to share with your book group as well. They'll be in the newsletter. They'll be up on our YouTube channel and out there for you to share. If you'd like to see more of these videos, please like and subscribe to them. Thanks so much for viewing. Really appreciate it.